Yes, awesome. All right, we're very excited for who's about to come up and join you right now. And we're going to set you up properly, awesomely. Please direct your attention to the video screens. There's people that are budding stars and they want to just take over the world and influence and they want to make a big difference and they want more quality clients. I remember what it was like to have two totally separate businesses and have no clue what direction I was supposed to go. I was super stressed about money, I was racking up so much debt, and I really didn't know what kind of coaching I wanted to focus on. So a friend of mine referred me to Shanda and the Hardcore community, and I decided to join even though I had no idea what I was in for. And what was great about it was that I was able to learn how to build a targeted audience, like an email list of my targeted audience, and even figure out what my niche was, like what was I even going to sell. In fact, I'll never forget the coaching call where I had this major breakthrough moment of what kind of coach I got to be. If I'm not calling myself a business coach, <laughs> what, who am I? <laughs> what am I calling myself? You're just you Amy know? Yamada. Oh, it's just yeah. Amy Yamada. You help entrepreneurs. Your client is entrepreneurs, mm -hmm. right? So remember right. that you don't have to fit into the mold. In fact, if you don't, then that's better. I'm Amy Yamada, and since joining the Hardcore community, I've built a multiple six-figure coaching business with clients all over the world. I've doubled my revenue again and again. I've gone on over 20 trips in the last year and was even featured in a film documentary called Inspired by Eleven. I've trained for endurance races within this community and completed my first triathlon. I've spoken on stages in front of hundreds of entrepreneurs and have been interviewed on multiple media platforms. And on a personal note, I've met the love of my life. Like, I wouldn't be where I am today if I hadn't met, like, oh, this way it's here. <laughs> so what I really want to say is that I would not be where I am today if I hadn't met Shanda Sumter and learned how to build this incredible community and be the coach that I am today. <laughs> oh, it's so cool. It's so cool. You know what's so cool is that a lot, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna let Amy give to you in a second, because how many people are struggling around messaging? Yes. yes. Literally. Okay, let me ask you a question. Are you making an offer, or can you talk to somebody on a video and they know exactly what you do? Right? So that's kind of her realm of genius. <laughs> and so, but it's really cool because our community, we build communities around rainy days, we build communities around helping each other when things are hard and when things are easy, celebrating with each other. But my point is, is that she's a great, there's a lot of people just like Amy in our community. You'll meet them over the next three days that are here. But it's cool because when you started, you, I mean, you didn't, you didn't know what you were doing at no, all. I had a couple of businesses and I was juggling a bunch of side projects. So how many of you have multiple things going on right now? And of those people, how many of you are making like no money? <laughs> That yeah. was me. Exactly. <laughs> totally shiny object syndrome. Yeah. yeah, so you were able to figure out how to fine tune yourself, focus on the right things at the right time, and she's been able to create a multiple six figure company, which is very cool, and fall in love with the man of her dreams. Yes, he's back there. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I'm going to let yeah. you give, and Thank I'll see you in so a little much. bit. All right. Love her up. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm just taking in this moment. You know, I talked to a lot of you and said, just take in the moment. I'm like, okay, okay. So I'm just really excited to be all here with all of you in beautiful Palm Springs. Yeah, right? Like sometimes we get to go to amazing places like this. And sometimes we get to go to exotic places. Like a little over a month ago, I found myself flying to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> Where's Pete Vargas? Pete Vargas here? Where is he? Okay. Well, thank you, Pete Vargas. He sent me there. And I don't know about you, but when I get on a plane, like how many of you flew in today or yesterday, I should say? Okay. When I get on a plane, I do this thing where I find my seat, you know, I get settled in, and then I kind of size up the person sitting next to me to see if they want to connect. <laughs> so I'm on this flight heading to Milwaukee, and I sit next to this guy. And he's got his headphones on, he's got his book open, the neck pillow, he had the works. So clearly he wanted to chat with me. Yeah, I was really excited about that. So naturally, I was like, 
hi, my name's Amy, how's it going? <laughs> and he took off his headphones and he's like, hi, nice to meet you. And we started to talk about places that we love to travel to that are not Milwaukee, Wisconsin. <laughs> and he shared with me the coolest story. He said, last holiday season, he took his daughters to the North Pole. I didn't know you could visit the North Pole. <laughs> and he said, not the actual North Pole, but there's a place called North Pole, Alaska. And he was talking about like Santa's house and like this winter wonderland. There's lights everywhere. And all I could think about was um, that movie, what is it called? Polar Express. You know, there's like elves dancing around. Thank you. And there's Santa just throwing his gifts out there. And <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. So I get off the plane and I get up my phone and I call my boyfriend Ken and I said, guess what? He's like, what? We're going to the North Pole! <laughs> he thought it was crazy. But anyway, we actually are now planning a trip with his kids for next year to go to the North Pole. Right? And I bet a lot of you are like, I want to go to the North Pole. And none of this would have happened had I not connected with the man sitting next to me on the plane. You know, headphone guy. <laughs> Probably didn't want to chat. <sighs> I just think about how just those connections can make all the difference in the world. There's 7.4 billion people on this planet. Most of us will only meet less than 10,000 of them. That is a tiny fraction of the entire world's population. Why would we not make every connection count? As you heard, my name is Amy Yamada, and there are three things you need to know about me. One is that I was sitting right here at the Zone event three years ago, asking myself, who am I to think that I can build a wildly successful coaching business and work from anywhere and travel? Who am I to think that? The second thing, as some of you know, is that I've learned that words and messaging are my strength. And finally, I've learned the importance of deep connection. Deep connection can change your business, it can change your relationships, and it can change your life. And today I'm going to talk about how, can, how it can affect your messaging. How many of you are excited about that? <laughs> and more specifically, your email marketing. Deep connection can also affect your, your, your business, your life, your relationships, but also how you attract clients, how to know what to even sell to your clients, and how to have an effective sales conversation. So deep connection is everything. So why don't we get started? So the first thing is to think about adding a deep connection statement in your emails, like early on in your emails. Most entrepreneurs and coaches will start their emails with a question. So they'll say something like, are you ready to meet your man? <laughs> or isn't it time you ditch that diet struggle? It's overdone and it's difficult to connect with. Instead, when you use a deep connection statement early on in your email, that's what's going to land with your ideal clients. One of the entrepreneurs I worked with, her name is Cindy Olin. I know. She's a love and relationships coach. And she was having problems getting sales calls. How many of you have problems getting sales calls? <laughs> right? So I said, why don't we take a look at your emails to see what's missing? And I took a look and I just thought, gosh, I would not respond to this. And I thought, think about what your clients are in pain around. Like, what is a frequently asked question that you get from your clients? And one of the things she shared that was perfect for a deep connection statement was something that a client of hers had shared. And it sounded like this. I'm so afraid of putting myself back out there in the dating scene. What if I never meet someone? Any woman who pulls up that email and sees that deeply connecting statement early on the email is going to see herself in that story and say, oh my God, that's me. I'm that woman, and she will read the rest of the email. 
What was so great about that was Cindy called me a few hours after sending that email out, and she said, Amy, <laughs> 18 women have booked a call with me since this morning. And that was in a few hours from one email. And I know it's because the women that read that email and saw themselves in that message were like, that's me. She earned their eyeballs for the rest of the email. In my Coaching Masters Academy, we take a look at my clients' emails to see if they have these types of deep connection statements so that their messaging can land. Let me give you another example. Tracy Campoli, where is she? <laughs> She's, look at her. She's filming me. My accountability buddy. So Tracy is a total powerhouse, and she was working on filling her next group program for women who want to lose weight. And she said, my, you know, my calendar's open. I've got to, again, book some sales calls. And I was like, let's work on your emails, <laughs> you know? And I said to her, you know, Tracy, I'm actually your ideal client. And I said, there's something that's super vulnerable that I know will land with your audience. And the deep connection statement sounded like this. I hate to admit it. Every single day, there's a moment where I think about my body and I feel fat. Any woman who's ever wanted to lose from 10 pounds to 100 pounds will read that statement in bold and say, that's me. I'm that person. And she will read the rest of the email. What was incredible was that night, Tracy contacted me and said, Amy, oh my god. <laughs> 25 women have booked a call with me, and there's a waiting list of five more. From one email in one day. That's 30 women who want to lose weight that are perfect for her program. That's the power of deep connection. So make sure you include that. Now, I know some of you don't have a list. Even when you're writing to one person, you can include a deep connection statement just put yourself in their shoes and be generous enough to say, what are they going through right now? Feel what they're feeling. Think about what they would say if they were right in front of you. And put that vulnerable statement in your email. The second thing, oh, I was going to say, <laughs> Tracy, after that, I remember this moment, she said, that was brilliant. How did you come up with those words and that, that style of email writing? And I said, well, OK, first I think about how to connect with a client. Then I think about how to write a subject line that gets opened. And then I think about an opening line. And she said, stop. <laughs> and she took out her phone and said, you have a system. I want it. Break it down. <laughs> and that's when I came up with my 11 steps. So today I'm sharing three of them with you, but there's 11. And she used that system throughout her entire sales enrollment and sold out her program. It was amazing, and it was really like, great for me to hear, because I'm like, awesome, my system works. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> so exciting. It's always good when you find out your stuff works, right? <laughs> totally. OK, so the second thing, I'm going to join you guys. I feel so disconnected. See, I like to connect with you guys. Hey, Talia. So the second thing is to write as if you're writing to one person. Now, I know that everyone tells you to write as if you're writing to one person but they don't tell you how. This is what I do. <laughs> I pull up an actual email in my personal inbox. So you know, we write emails every single day, right? So you pull up an actual email in your actual inbox and write your draft in that email. Like, write it in your actual inbox. Because what you're doing there is you're actually telling your subconscious mind that you're truly writing to one person. Because sometimes I'll talk to entrepreneurs, and they're like, oh, I'm sending emails to my list, and nothing's happening. They've worked so hard to build this list. You know what Shanna's talking about? It's so important. But if you build this list, and nobody's getting back to you, I, I hear this thing all the time. My list is dead. <laughs> like, your list is not dead. I don't think I have the right people in my list. No, that's not true. You're just not connecting enough. You're missing the most important thing, which is deep connection. So write as if you're writing to one person and use that personal draft to, to do that so your subconscious mind is thinking, I'm truly writing to one person. So a little side note, 
I always have the fear of tripping when you get on stage in heels. <laughs> little side note, oftentimes entrepreneurs will ask me about writing subject lines that get opened. Because, again, if your emails are not get getting read, then it's because the subject line isn't connecting. So another side tip is to open up your own sent items in your personal inbox for inspiration. We write emails every single day to one on, like one-on-one -on -one with people, right? So why would we not look at our own sent items for inspiration on, like, we're like cheating, like, oh my gosh, this is a swipe file. Oh, but it's me. <laughs> your own subject lines. It's real, it's genuine, it's you, okay? Okay, so the third thing is all about how to end your email. Now, everyone knows that the most read parts of the email are your opening line and the PS, if you choose to use one. In the PS, what I like to do is think about the yeah buts. <laughs> Have you ever had one of those sales conversations that's going so great, you're like, oh, this person's going to say yes. They're in, they're my ideal client, they're the perfect fit, and they go, yeah, but, and then fill in the blank with, I can't afford it, or I need to think about it, or I need to talk to everybody on the planet for permission, or whatever their situation is. So when I write an email, I think about what is going to, like, really, like, if you've, if you've give, written an email and you've given them the opportunity to talk to you, as an example, as a call to action, think about what, what, what might come up for them. What might their yeah but be, their objection? So, for example, I know that when I've written an awesome email and I'm inviting them to chat with me, that their, their objection, their yeah, but might be sounding like, yeah, but Amy, is a phone call with you really going to help me get my next big breakthrough in my business? So in the PS, I'll write, I know you might be thinking or wondering if a phone call with me is going to help you have your next big breakthrough in your business. I totally get it. I've been where you are now, and I'm totally happy to help. Click on this link and book a call with me and let's chat. So I'm already thinking about what are they going through right now? What's coming up for them? Because even when I'm offering the chance to help for free, people still say, oh, I, I don't want to, she might try to sell me something. I might. I'm committed to helping them any way I can. So in that, in that PS, it's my last opportunity in the email to say, what's coming up for them? What is their yeah but? and answer that question and invite them again. So as I mentioned, there are 11 steps to writing a deeply connecting email, and today I've shared with you three of them. So just a quick recap for those of you taking notes, I love it, is to include a deep connection statement early on in your email. The second is to write as if you're writing to one person and use that trick of using your personal inbox, you know, to write that draft. And the third is to handle the yeah, but, or the number one objection in the PS, okay? So as I was talking to Shanda about what would be really helpful for you, no normally I only share the 11 steps and teach that with my private coaching clients and my coaching master's academy, but I thought, why not be generous? That's what Shanda practices, that's what our community practices. So I'm happy to share that with you if you'd like. So I know the team's about to pass out these cards, so if, team, if you could do that. Um, and on these cards, if you fill it out, then I'm literally going to break it down exactly what Tracy used to fill her entire group program. So it's the 11 steps. You just fill out this form, and I'll go ahead and email it to you. Right? <laughs> and I want you to have this because deep connection matters. So use it. Please don't have this be one of those things that you get that you're like, oh, I'll get to it later. Just try it. It's completely free. And it's worked for so many of my clients in my academy, as well as a lot of my colleagues that have been happy to help, OK? So when it comes to deep connection, uh, it takes me back to an awesome experience that I had with 35 entrepreneurs. And we flew out to Jesse Itzler's house. And he's here this week. Like, you're going to meet him. He's amazing. I cannot wait. And Shanda and Jesse had coordinated this crazy endurance challenge, because they're all about endurance. And, okay, so picture this, right? Off the back of his house, there's this huge, it's a beautiful, huge house. There's this patio, and there's this steep hill that goes from here all the way down to the lake. And in order for us to all have our breakthroughs in our mindset and whatnot, they thought it would be great if 
all of us climbed up this hill 100 times. Yeah, I signed up for that. <laughs> I really just wanted to hang with Jesse and Shanda and the group, and they're like, okay, so I have to do this hill thing too, fine. Now, Crystal Jackson, I know some of you know who she is. That amazing woman was done in two and a half hours. I mean, she was just hustling. I was like, she, I'm like slow, and she's just going, and I'm like, oh, she's amazing. She's done in two and a half hours. At four hours, I was still out there. I was in so much pain. I just stopped every time I got to the halfway point, and I just was like, I don't know how I'm gonna do this. And people kept passing me by and passing me by. And every time somebody got to their 100th hill, the DJ would play the Rocky Peen song. <laughs> it was awesome, right? They're like, yeah, and they're running, and I'm like, oh my god. <laughs> Can you stop playing that song, please? Like, I'm not going to get there. I was like, all right. You know, and a lot of things happen in the mindset when you're going for a goal. I just kept going, kept going. And, and I just felt like, I hope I can finish this. But I knew in my mind, I was so committed out of my mind to do it. At the four and a half mark, four and a half hour mark, Jesse gets on the microphone. And he's like, all right, everybody, five hours. We're going to cut off the challenge. You're doing great. If you're going to finish, go ahead and finish your 100. If not, you've done great. <laughs> what? I did not come here to not finish. I'm like, OK, well, I teared up. I actually was on Facebook Live. Sonia, wherever you are, she was, I, just, I saw her. I was like, oh, OK. You know? I saw Sonia bawling. And I was like, OK. I'm just going to keep going until I maybe stop. And Jesse said to Ken, why is she still out there? She's not going to finish. And Ken's like, you don't know Amy. <laughs> She's not going to stop until you force her to quit. So I get up to the top, five hours happens. He's like, all right, we're cutting it off. And I'm like, oh. And he looks at me. He's like, Yamada, go ahead. Get back out there. Do one more. You're at 79. You can get to 80. I'm like, OK, I can at least do 80. This I can do. So I get back out there. I get to my 80. They cut it off. The DJ packs up, volunteers go home, everybody goes inside. And I just didn't feel complete, you know? You know when you go for a goal and you're so, you've trained for it, you've done everything right, and it's not done. So I talked to Crystal and Ken, I said, I wanna finish. I know it's over, but it's not over for me. So that night, <laughs> Crystal and I went back out on that hill. We snuck out after 11 o'clock. It's pitch black out. We're like, we're going to do this. I had this t-shirt that I brought. that said committed. I'm like, this is perfect. <laughs> this would be a good story to tell at some point. And we're like going, you know, up and down this hill. Like, oh, I'm so sore. What am I going to get with my 100? Nobody knows. It's okay. It's, it's cool. And I started to come up. And every time we came up, there was a few people at the top of the hill, the patio. I'm like, what are you doing? She's like, Yamada's getting her 100. I'm like, that's right. I'm getting my 100. That's what I came here to do. And I'm like, ah. So we kept going down, and we'd go into the blackness, and we'd come back up. And every time I came back up to the top, the silhouette started to grow. I'm like, we got a crowd going. And you know, I love a crowd, right? <laughs> and so then it got really exciting. It was like 87, 88, 80. And they're counting with me now. 90. Now, 90 was the point in the race where you get this black band, because they're like, you got 10 more. But there were no bands. So there was my man, Ken at the top, he took off his band. He's like, here you go. I'm like, yeah, I got my band. I keep going. I'm like, I'm doing this, you know? And then every time I came up, they were like high-fiving me, and I was like, this is so great. And so we got to the bottom, like 97, 98, 99. And I looked up at the top of that hill, and I'm like, Crystal, this is it. You're going for it. Silent. And I started to go up. And at the halfway point, she's like, you need to stop. I'm like, yeah, let me get a breath real quick. <laughs> I looked at the top of the hill. The entire group had recreated the race with everybody there. They had pulled up chairs. Jesse got out the air horn so he could blow it for me. <laughs> yeah, he had an air horn. Everyone, when they finished, they got the air horn. I was like, oh my god. The only thing missing was the DJ with that damn Rocky theme song. <laughs> so they started to sing. They started to sing, and I was like, oh my god, they're singing! They're singing! And Crystal's like, this is amazing, like, this is the best moment ever! And I 
started running up the hill as I heard them singing. I'm like, oh my gosh, I finished my 100! And it was like the biggest hug line. I was like surrounded with all these people. It was so cool that I had the best ending and I was last. <laughs> Unforgettable. I had tears in my eyes. And what was so cool was that everybody at the top of the hill had tears in their eyes too. I'll never forget it. That's what deep connection is. That's what you get to bring into your messaging. So they feel you. When you can land a message that is so powerful that others can actually see themselves in your story and be right there, that's when you will attract clients and build the business and life and relationships that you absolutely love. So the next time you write an email or jump on a sales call or even at this event, every single one of these people is one of your 10,000. Make it count. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And now I'm so honored to bring back my coach, the incredible, fabulous, super inspiring, Shanda Sumter. Thank you so much. This girl is Did you hand out your, your form? The, did you hand that? Yeah, so okay, filled out the form. Go ahead and pass it to the right. Don't awesome. forget that. Okay, awesome. To you. Thanks, Amy. Love you. Love you. Mm -hmm.